All right, my name is Prince. Uh, thanks, Stephen, for the intro. So, one of the things that, you know, so he's kind of given a good background of where we are at right now. So, one example that we want to kind of go over this is the SSDG tool and what we have in place right now. I'm going to give a quick overview of that and then Peter will deep dive into kind of like the first warning tech that he's built on top of this, which is kind of where we're heading and what the next step is for, um, for some of this stuff. Okay. All right, SSDG starts for a self-service diagnostic gateway. Uh, pretty much what it does is it sits between uh, customers' ATMs. So we have all these banks that are our customers. They have all these S uh, ATMs and they have tools and software that they use to manage, uh, manage those ATMs. And so it sits between that and our dispatch system. So that would be when um, a work order gets created, a customer engineer, uh, as Huntsman mentioned, goes out to fix something. So it kind of sits in between that. So it collects a lot of information, uh, incident information, um, events or things happening on the machine, along with um, work order requests that are coming from the customer there. Um, quick overview of what, uh, and this is a very simple um, diagram showing kind of, kind of where SSDG sits between us and uh, the customers, which in this case would be a bank big banks. Um, some of the key benefits I'm going to quickly go over and then we'll just look at the current <coughs> dashboard. Um, gets rid of unnecessary work orders requir requiring um, someone to go out there to fix something. Mm -hmm. Obviously that costs money and we want to try to remotely resolve as many issues that come up with the customer as possible. You know, it's a win-win for everyone. We save money, um, less downtime, we're able to meet our resolve service letter agreements with customers. Everyone is happy. Um, and also, we get you know much more detailed data from the uh, from the ATM um, through this tool here. So we can look at all sorts of error codes, see what's happening. Okay, what what codes were coming or what status messages were coming to us from these machines before this particular part failed, for example. So we're able to do that sort of analysis. Um, also, make sure that multiple work orders don't get created for a machine, um, and making sure that um, an engineer has all the necessary information about what's wrong, or at least more information about what's wrong with the machine before they before they go out there to try to fix it um, so that we can get a better first visit um, resolution there. Um, and then remotely resolving incidents, so being able to identify where things can be kind of fixed without uh, sending someone out there. Um, a couple examples of that that I'll quickly go over is so with this tool, we're able to kill about 20% of the requests that come in uh, from the customers. So uh, we have kind of processes set in place where we can identify that these things can be fixed remotely, for example. Let's say um, one example would be ATM screen froze and it's letting us know that that's what happened. Obviously, for most of those cases, I'm making this example up, but you know, you can just have the bank manager unplug or reboot the ATM instead of having uh, you know someone go out there to fix something where where that was the issue. Another another possible example is um, when when we're getting these messages from ATMs, we're able to identify whether it's something that's wrong with what we're doing, um, something that's wrong with the ATM, or if it's something that has to do with the bank network itself. Um, so we can identify kind of those and kind of direct those to the necessary people there. Um, those are kind of the two examples I had. So now I'll show you what the current dashboard that we have in place looks like. So just to give you a little bit of a background. So as you can imagine, all the information that we have, um, there's a lot of data in here. So before um, this whole Tableau journey, and we, we started creating things in Tableau, there was someone uh, who was spending five hours a day every Sunday just looking at data for one customer. So now with this, you know, we. As, as slow as it might have been when we set it up, um, I have the dashboard like sitting on extract, so it's much faster. And we moved it to hyper for the online version as well, so it's working much faster. But even waiting like one minute for the dashboard to come up was saving people an exponential amount of time because they were crunching numbers, going through all these massive data sets, trying to export it into sheets and doing this work on the weekends just to look at one customer. So this helped a lot there. Um, and I'll kind of bring up the dashboard. And uh, kind of show you show you the views. So this was the dashboard that was put together initially compared to what the person was doing when just when it comes to um, one customer and creating these manual exports. So I'll just quickly go over this and how we're using it right now, and then we'll get to Peter. We'll show some of the more um, cooler stuff here. Um, so here, 
we're just looking at last three years of requests coming in from uh, from SSDG, for example, and we're showing like the percentage kill. So how many how many of those requests are we able to cancel out and not dispatch an engineer to go fix because a we're able to solve it remotely or we're able to direct it to the right resource. Maybe it's um, third party who's filling the machines. They need to come fix something. Whatever it may be, you know, identifying it accurately so we can kill off those duplicate requests. Or if a, uh, you know, uh, an engineer, let's say engineer level two is already going to fix an ATM for a reason, and another work order comes in uh, that's just looking for engineer level one, we're automatically going to cancel that because someone with the experience is already going to be there and they'll be able to take care of all the problems at once. So, so this provides a very high level view of um, kind of the total number of uh, field work orders, which is when someone is going out there, and then the total number of service requests. So it shows. Uh, the percentage that gets killed off and doesn't um, require an actual dispatch and an engineer going out there. And then we have some forecasting uh, functionality here on both of these visualizations that Huntsman mentioned previously. Um, at the bottom here we're looking at unique assets and the total of requests per asset. So an asset being an ATM here, kind of looking at how many, you know, overall is the total number of requests or error messages or status codes that we're getting from these machines is that going up at a high level. Um, and obviously we have three tree, uh, tree maps here that are kind of big. So obviously we removed um, the customer information, uh, but most of the time when people are coming to this dashboard, they already kind of understand um, what they're looking for. It's, because it's very reactive, right? You kind of have to know what you're looking for. There's just so much data. Most of the time they're looking at one particular customer or, or, uh, or a set of ATMs. Maybe they heard from the customer, for example, that these model A ATM that we have is having these issues. So then someone will come in here, filter down on just the customer and that particular uh, product class with model ATM and start looking at some of this information. But there's just so much data there. It's, it's great for like a high level view here, um, but it doesn't give you much, much information. It doesn't tell you where to look. You kind of have to already know where you're gonna be looking for this information, so very reactive. Um, one other view that I kind of wanted to show real quick was this whole notion of um, leakage. So that's when um, when an engineer goes to a site to fix an ATM, for example, and when they get there, they realize that it could have been fixed remotely and that they don't need to go in. So that's something that we monitor closely as well. So it's the percentage of or the number of uh, leakage work orders where things could have been resolved um, remotely. So when we have this information, we'll go back and look at what are the um, status codes that come in through here. How can we better identify these so that they can be remotely resolved? Um, one of the other ways that this is being used right now. And then last view that I kind of want to go over is, uh, so I just filtered this view here that we have into just a few status names, just to give you an idea. Uh, but the, the whole list I'll just show here is pretty massive. So you can imagine how much data is coming through here. I just randomly picked three so you can see the fluctuation. So, you can see in Q3 there was something that was happening with this deposit failure error message that we were getting a lot of. But you get you get the idea. This is just filtered down on like three status names. So if you're looking at all of them for a particular customer or an entire fleet or a group of customers, it becomes very hard to identify what to look at here. It's all very reactive. So just wanted to kind of give a quick overview of what we currently have in place and what, before I hand it over to Peter, uh, some of the cool stuff that he's on top of this so we can be more uh, proactive. But any questions about this? Yeah. What's the base from, are you using the base version of forecasting or are you playing better than the So I believe it's the base version. I didn't originally create this dashboard, but um, this was one of the first dashboards that I think was created when um, we got Tableau Server and some of the base forecasting. So there's other groups that also use this SSDG data and all the events and error messages coming in to also forecast out what they think the number of work orders are going to be in a more complex manner. But this gives some gen generic forecasting abilities. Is this one database or are you aggregating data from multiple databases? So uh, if I go back to my uh, slide here, so it's it, this slide kind of is oversimplifies uh, the crap out of what SSDG does, but um, it, there's there's a, so there's you know there's um, um, ATM management systems which give us messages and error messages from ATMs. Then there's customer uh, dispatch systems. So all that information gets combined into SSDG, 
and then from there we're reporting on it with some views that we have created in Aster, um, which is what we're using as kind of the back end. So we moved that to um, Hyper Extract recently um, because it was taking a very long time, or what we would most tablet users would probably consider a very long time to use. But it's much better than what they were doing manually before, so yeah. most people are still pretty happy. Yeah. The, the data that you receive is purely on the tax of the machine. You're not getting any banking No, we're not getting like, you no, know, we wouldn't know how much uh, money you have in your account or how much you just took out. <laughs> 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 you're, you're not concerning yourself with, oh, it fell on this account. It's just, there's a fail. Yeah, I mean, we can identify, I mean, obviously, which customer the machine belongs to and everything like that, but not based on nothing. The customer is in the bank, not uh, the customer is in the you. Yep. For these hyper extracts, how much uh, is it speeding up? And also, is this something that can be done consistently across different dashboards? How much room do we have on the tablet to be doing these sort of hyper extracts? So I think it you know really depends on the use case. So one of the first things that we did when I started here was we moved one of our dashboards to an extract. And um, I don't even want to say how long it was taking before. But let's just say the improvement was exponential. like. Um, extremely like a lot so like let's say <laughs> let's say five seconds to over a minute like that kind of difference so in certain cases the data sets that we deal with are just massive when it's whether it's looking at work order data or all this kind of event data coming from SSDG so um, most of the times we try to create some sort of reporting tables or something like that that people can use but there's always people that want the, the detail level data to do their own analysis so then you have to then you know they have to kind of deal with the slowness or use some other way of accessing the data. But um, yeah, huge improvement wherever we've used hyper extract so far. Um, like that example I gave, over a minute to like, um, you know, five, 10 seconds. And we're starting to use prep now too for a lot of things, at least locally. So um, when I had downloaded the dashboard, I was gonna, we were gonna originally show like a live version versus the hyper extract one. But since then we've um, replaced the one on Tableau server with the hyper extract as well. So. They're both much faster now. Yep. Or, go ahead. You go first. Uh, I was, do you, are you doing a full extract each time when you do a refresh, or just the, uh, the, the load since last refresh? Like incremental? Um, I honestly don't know, because IT set up this extract on Tableau server. Um, okay. You would hope incremental, but there might be some other factors I'm unaware of for populating it where they're doing a full refresh. Um, we just set up a refresh for all our work order data, whether it's finance, hos um, hospitality, retail, and everything. And that um, they're running, it takes a long time. Typically, it's incremental during the week and a full refresh on the weekend. There you go. So, incremental during the week and full refresh on the weekend for some of these data sets. Yep. On the forecasting, are you using it to drive business decisions? Yeah, I'll jump in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> This is just showing what a potential forecast could be, but we basically have a team of 16 folks that are basically using that forecast to predict all the way upstream to SSDG, how many number of phone calls we're taking, five million phone calls a year, the three million things that go through SSDG every year, to start predicting what everything's gonna happen next month, next quarter, next year. So we can then say, oh, we also know how long it's gonna take. Each one of those is gonna take because it's an install, or a traditional, I just have to go there and wipe its nose, clean it up. <laughs> you know, that one's only you know, 1 1.2 hours, the install is three hours. We can now put time on it, and we can start looking at, all right, what's your workload out there versus the you know, it's workload versus workforce, right? So making those decisions and basically a traditional SNLP process is what we use to actually facilitate that every single month and go through that cadence. We predict by month, we consume by week, and make decisions based on hiring decisions or start telling people you're going to be sad next month because these things are coming and happening. We're going to have an impact on SLA on what we're going to do and we have those choices and consequences and that cadence is once a month to make those decisions and inform folks out in the business in the 90 countries we're doing this. So I don't know if that answers your question. Yep. Cool. Anything else before I hand it off to Peter so we can get to the cooler stuff? <laughs> All right, well, we don't too much. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. Thank